It's been a year crammed full of incredible releases for filmmakers, and the release of the Panasonic S1H may just top that list of 2019's filmmaking heavyweights. We've been lucky enough to be given one for a review, coupled with the phenomenal Lumix Pro S 50mm. And what better way to test this filmmaking beast than out on location on a film shoot in Cornwall? Now before we get on to actually using the camera, it makes a lot of sense to look at the specs. And with the Panasonic S1H, they are considerable. The 24.2 full frame CMOS sensor and Venus image processor that Panasonic have used are capable of a myriad of resolutions, frame rates, and bit depths. From a full frame 6K readout in a three x two aspect to 5.9K in 16 by nine. Now, if 6K isn't your thing, don't worry, you can internally record 10-bit cinema 4K at up to 60 frames per second with a Super 35 crop, or 422 10-bit 4K in 30 frames per second using the full frame. Now, if you want some of that buttery, smooth slow-mo, you've got that too at 1080 with up to 180 frames per second cropped, or 144 frames per second in full frame with audio. Now in truth, that is just a small selection of the video record options available to you. The list of what this camera can actually potentially do is so large that Panasonic have had to include a filtering system on the menu. In total, it's five pages long. The functionality for filmmakers doesn't end there though. The S1H further proves its pro-level credentials by providing a massive 14 stops of dynamic range and offering up the full V-Log profile seen in the Varicam models such as the EVA 1. Anyone coming from the GH5 will know that this is a welcome step up that Panasonic have made. This miniature Cinecam continues its impressive spec sheet with a host of internally de-squeezed anamorphic options. So if you're lucky enough to be using an anamorphic lens, you can get the best out of this 6K sensor while still using the in-body image stabilization. And talking off that IBIS, the S1H isn't left lacking here either, offering an incredible six stops of stabilization. Now as suggested by those specs, actually shooting with a Panasonic S1H is a far more involved affair than a simple point and shoot. Thankfully though, Panasonic have made this a touch easier with all the video assist functions they've managed to cram into this mirrorless body. Correctly exposing and grabbing focus is made a joy with the huge amount of options made available to you in camera. These assist tools will all be familiar to experienced filmmakers from focus peaking and focus zooming to two simultaneous zebra meters. Vector scoping for white balance and adjustable waveform metering are also present, essentially Every tool you could want for getting the shot is here, making this a really complete feeling filmmaker's tool. The handling of the Panasonic S1H is actually a really important consideration, especially when we consider that this is a miniaturized handheld cinema camera. Now its ergonomics are actually really great. It feels lovely in hand. And that 3.2 inch touchscreen on the rear is bright and clear to use even in the brightest daylight conditions. This is aided further by the articulation of the screen itself, being able to both tilt in its frame for low shooting and also being able to fully articulate out from the side to form a fully front-facing monitor, especially helpful for those single shooters. The always-on top display is also one of my favorite additions to this camera. It's both really convenient to use at a glance and also fully customizable. It's just a really nice addition to make this camera even easier to use. Now the final consideration when using the Panasonic S1H are our record times and battery life. And once again, this camera doesn't disappoint. The controllable fan calling to the rear of the camera offers us unlimited record time. Now this is only curtailed by the size of your SD cards or the life of the impressive 3050 milliamp hour batteries. So moving on to the most important part, and that is the image that this 6K beast can render for you. And in truth, 
it is ridiculously good. This is by far the best looking camera that we've managed to get our hands on this year. It not only lives up to that huge price tag, but also its credentials have been a miniaturized handheld cinema camera. Now, ordinarily I struggle to find justification for an image as big as 6K, but the depth and quality you get make it totally justified here. Now the 6K and 5.9K modes record in a H.265 codec, meaning they're actually really efficient data-wise at only 200 megabits per second. These modes give you huge scope for post-production, be it for reframing, adding stabilization, or just in bit depth in order to really push color grading hard. However, it is worth noting that a lot of computers will struggle with that H.265 compression when it comes to editing. Now for me, the 4K options are where this camera really comes into its own. Now, as previously mentioned, there's a huge amount of variations of this, but in short, the full frame 422 10-bit 4K files are absolutely gorgeous to work with in post. There is so much scope and depth for correction and editing, it's almost endless. And the fact that they're compressed in H.264 codec mean that that editing is even easier on your computer. It is worth noting that the file sizes and bit rates in 4K are huge at 400 megabits per second. You'll be burning through gigabytes of footage really quickly, and at that speed of data, you're gonna need the SD cards to match. Thankfully, the S1H has two UHS-2 compliant SD card slots, and you will need them. We ended up taking the plunge on some SanDisk Extreme Pro V90 cards, which at the time of filming were one of the few available that were up to the task of coping with 400 megabits per second of 4K recording. Now, being a full frame camera, we already know that the potential for great low light performance is here, but I was genuinely surprised at how good and clean this image is in those lower light situations. This is because the S1H sensor uses a dual native ISO system that switches noise circuitry dependent on the ISO settings. The result is a truly impressive low noise low light recording even at higher ISOs. So what is there not to like about the Panasonic S1H? Well, in truth, very little. However, no camera is perfect and there is always compromises to have, especially when so many features are crammed into a body this small. Now, there is a learning curve to be had with the S1H, especially if you're looking at this as an upgrade to the GH5. For sure, there is a ton of similarities to that awesome Micro Four Thirds camera, but in truth, this is far more akin to the Varicam than anything else. As such, it takes a lot more heavy lifting to use and is definitely aimed at the pro level user. I guess that should be no surprise considering the hefty price point it sits at. Functionality wise, my only real criticisms would be the DFD autofocus system, which isn't the best for speed and hunting. Also, once the camera is set to roll, the focus zooming is disabled if you're in manual. Now that's certainly not a deal breaker, but is one of the few issues that I could find with this camera. Now it's a rare thing to find a camera that is so perfect in so many ways and when they do come along they often make such a huge leap forward that they change the filmmaking game for good. For 2019 the Panasonic S1H is certainly that camera and filmmakers everywhere are totally going to fall in love with this 6K monster. <laughs>